Hello you Fibrous Warren here, I hope you are all well and welcome to your Wednesday lesson for guided reading. Now today we're going to be looking at the text looked at on Monday and Tuesday to answer some explain questions uh, to do with the text, so let's get into it. Okay, so this is your starter activity. What can you see in this image and what are they doing? So you can write as many things down as you'd like for those two questions. Make sure you're using the image to justify your points for the questions. So pause when you're here, it's now your turn. Okay, welcome back. Hope you had some time to answer those two questions and I'm going to kind of verbally talk through some ideas. So what can you see in the image? So I can see it looks like an astronaut. I can see that they're reading a book. I can see they're on some type of rocky surface, potentially the moon. I can see the, um, I can see the earth in front of it. I can see they're in space. So what are they doing? So it looks like they're sat down. They look like they're having a bit of a rest. Uh, they're reading. Um, they look like they're exploring the moon, maybe. There could be something else that you could think of. So I can't wait to see what you send to the Year 5 email, and now let's move on. We're going to be looking at the skill of explain over this week. Now, recapping, what are the key skills? Can you remember them for me? So pause the video here and have a think about what the key skills are for explain. Okay, welcome back. You've had some time to think about that question. And now these are the key skills when you're looking at explain questions. So make your point about the text and then justify your answer with evidence and examples. So sometimes if the question is asked you to explain something, you need to make your point using the text to support you. So I'm now going to read both the text from the previous two lessons uh, and I'm going to remove the headings of the text and you have to figure out which heading goes to each section. So obviously each section is either weightlessness, eating and drinking, hold on tight and beds on board. And obviously the top heading is obviously just life in space. So I'm now going to read all of it and you just have to say which heading comes first. So life in space. The very first people in space only went up for short hops to see what it was like. Today astronauts can spend weeks or even months living and working in space thanks to large satellites called space stations. This picture was taken during a space shuttle mission to serve as the Hubble Space Telescope, which is on the right. This robotic arm is a part of the shuttle's remote manipulator system, in brackets the RMS, and people grow up to about 5 centimetres or 2 inches taller when they are in space. Okay, so this is the first section without a heading. You have to figure out which heading will go for this section. Astronauts have a supply of specially prepared meals that they either heat up or add water to before eating. Some food and drinks are ready to consume straight away. So we've got dry pear, drinks and meal tray, straps onto leg. The next section. Gravity is what makes us feel heavy. For astronauts on board, spacecraft and space stations cannot feel it working on them. They feel weightless. People and objects that are not held down may float about inside the craft. An astronaut's bed is a sleeping bag with body straps to keep people from floating around as they rest. The crew always keep the lights on, so eye shades are also needed. This is a suction toilet. It uses flowing air to suck the waste into a container. Users have to strap themselves in. OK, hopefully you've got the headings in the right places. And now let's have a look at some tricky words. So can you read them? I'm going to read them and I want you to repeat after me. Satellites. Weightlessness. Manipulator. Astronauts. Telescope. Now, what is the root word in the word sleeping? That's right, it's the word sleep with the suffix of ing to the end. So what is the spelling where you can see in the word mission? Pause the video here and have a think about that for me. Welcome back. Give me some time to think about what the spelling word is and it's the shun ending, the S-I-O-N ending. So today I'm only going to say the words and then I'm going to show you the definitions of the words and then how I've used them in a sentence too. So once I've said it, I want you to repeat after me. Satellites. Weightlessness. Telescope. Manipulator. Astronauts. And obviously now, like I said before, I'm going to show you the definitions and then how I've used them in a sentence so you can always check uh, your understanding. OK, so these are the definitions. So the first one is satellites, which is a man-made object orbiting around the Earth or Moon or another planet to collect information. Two, weightlessness, the state of not being acted on by gravity. Three, telescope, an object used visually, designed to make distant objects appear nearer. Four, manipulator, someone who handles or controls something skillfully. Five, astronaut, someone skillfully trained to travel into space. And I'm going to go on to the sentences. One, orbiting around the Earth, satellites collect information. Two, when in space, you can feel the sense of weightlessness. Three, I use a telescope to look at the stars. Four, 
The technician, who was a skillful manipulator, controlled the robotic arm. And five, there are astronauts in the ISS. Now, for each of these sentences, I try to make them kind of based around space because the vocabulary that we're looking at this week are from space texts. Um, but that's completely fine if you weren't able to. Um, maybe that's a challenge that you could set yourself today to try and make your sentences a little bit more spacey. OK, we're now going to have a look at some explain questions. Um, and this is the first one. This is my turn. I'm going to have a look at this question myself. Um, and then we're going to go through an hour turn. And I'm going to leave you with three to do challenges that you can get on with. OK, so the question is, explain what happened during the mission in this part of the text. So I'm going to read the text again. This picture was taken during a space shuttle mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. So I can see here that they've got a space shuttle mission and on the mission they service the Hubble Space Telescope. So that's going to be my answer. So this is my answer. During the mission they went to service the Hubble Space Telescope. So I've taken it straight from the text and that is explained what they did during the mission. OK, so now it's our turn. Explain the difference between gravity and weightlessness. So let's have a look at this piece of text. So we've got weightlessness. Gravity is what makes us feel heavy, but astronauts on board spacecraft and space stations cannot feel it working on them. They feel weightless. People and objects that are not held down may float inside the aircraft. So I can see the first part explains what gravity is. So it says that gravity is what makes us feel heavy. So that is what gravity is. And a little bit later on, it talks about weightlessness. So we need to think about the difference between gravity and weightlessness using this text. So I wonder if you can have a go for me. Pause the video here and try and write an answer, and then we can come back and check through our answers together. So pause the video here. It's now your turn. OK, I hope you've had some time to write an answer down. And here is my answer so you can compare it to your own. So I've said gravity makes you feel heavy. Weightlessness is when the astronauts don't feel the gravity working on them and they may float around. So I've got there, gravity is what makes you feel heavy. Weightlessness is when the astronauts don't feel the gravity working on them and they may float around. Because it says astronauts on board the spacecraft cannot feel it working on them. Well, it is gravity. So they can't feel gravity working on them. And later on in the text, it says they might float about inside the craft. So I've used all that piece of text to help with my answer. OK, so we're going to move on to some chili challenges now. There's going to be one chili challenge per slide. And so you pause the video when you want to answer that question. So chili one, can you explain how the toilets work in space? So use the text there and explain how the toilets work. Pause the video here if you want to answer this question for me. Chili two, can you explain the difference between the very first space travel and space travel today? So using that text again. Can you explain the difference between the very first space travel and space travel today? Pause the video here if you're going to answer that question for me. And finally, Chili 3. Which section of the text was the most interesting or useful part to help Liam? Now, Liam is the main character in Cosmic, who is in space. How could the information in the text help him? Now, we've got the four headings for eating and drinking, weightlessness, Hold on tight, which is to do with going to the toilet and beds on board. So I'm going to put the text at the end so you've got it again to look at. Um, but think about which section of the text will help Liam the most, who is in space. Which parts of it will help him? What information would be useful for Liam to know now? So pause the video here if you're going to answer that. Make sure you write the question down so when you go to look at the text, you have then the questions to refer back to so you don't have to flick back to this page later on. OK, so I'm going to carry reading Cosmic now. I want a new chapter called In China, You Idiot. We have reached our destination, said Dr Drax. Welcome to Infinity Park. It's too dark now to see it properly and you'll all be too tired to appreciate it. A thing like minibus with caterpillar tracks came to take us to our accommodation. I remember looking out of the window, but there was nothing to see. Just the odd campfire every now and then and a car. 
We'd been driving about 10 minutes when the minibus thing stopped suddenly and Dr. Ross asked us to look out of the windows on the left side of the bus. At first there was nothing but darkness, but then suddenly something like a massive door had opened. There was a building. It looked like a big red cliff lit by banks and banks of spotlights. It was bigger than the biggest skyscraper you've ever seen and had massive Chinese letters painted down the side. What is it? said, well, everyone really. That, said Dr. Drax, is the Possibility Building. And what's inside? Inside there is our main attraction. Inside there is the rocket. But what is the rocket? What kind of ride is it? What's it like? What's it like? It's not like anything. It's unique. It is the biggest thrill ride in the history of the world. That's all. I can't describe it because it's indescribable. When I was being a grown up in Liverpool, I got free yoghurt. In China, I got my own house. The minibus thing dropped us off at a little cluster of bungalows with lawns and streetlights and traffic islands, like a housing estate. A whole bungalow all to ourselves. I said to Florida, isn't this brilliant? Basically, you've kidnapped me and taken me to a desert, a desert in China. I suppose, but come on, apart from the fact that it's in China, what do you think? I mean, look at this house. There's nothing apart from about being in China. Liam, being in China is major. The house was mostly one big open room with a kitchen bit at one end and two huge couches at the other end and a weird kind of little garden full of cacti in between. And, said Florida, looking all around it, it's got no telly. Well, maybe we could ask for a telly. Anyway, it's probably a good thing we haven't got one because we're supposed to be up early in the... Florida had found a little panel of buttons in the arm of the couch. When she touched one, the whole living room wall turned blue and started to hum. And then a picture appeared with sound. The television was an entire wall of the living room. Now this, said Florida, is good. We both flopped on the couch. We were hypnotised. It was amazing, even when it was only showing farming news in Cantonese. But after a bit of channel flicking, we found an American channel that was showing celebrity seance, where living celebrities tried to contact the spirits of the dead celebrities, and Florida looked like she'd gone to heaven. Look, she yelled, there's Lindsay! Ah! Lindsay was the presenter, but Florida acted like Lindsay was her mum, her sister, her cat, and her favourite blanket all rolled into one. I said, as soon as this is finished, lights out and bed. Big day tomorrow. Liam, stop talking like a grown-up. There's no grown-up here. That's the only good thing about it. But I'm supposed to be your dad. That's the whole point. I've got to act the role of your dad. So I'm getting into character, like Lisa said. If you're going to be my dad, be like my dad, not like yours. Get me presents and ice cream. Don't sit there telling me about history and stuff. Do you know what time it is? Isn't it a bit late for ice cream? It would be if you were a real dad. But you're not. You're a kid. I'm a kid. We can do what we want. If we want ice cream for supper, we can have ice cream for supper. And apparently we did want ice cream for supper. Luckily, we had buckets of ice cream, including Chocopocalypse flavour in the freezer. Florida took it back to the couch and sat there in front of the telly. Every few seconds, she'd poke a spoon in. And if you want to watch telly all night, she said, we can. Yeah, but not yeah, but just yeah. While she was busy with the ice cream, I sneaked another look at Talk to Your Teen and found a bit about how to lay down ground rules and make sure your teen has barriers. I was just going to set a few barriers in place when Florida said, Liam, come look at this. She discovered that you could send pictures from her Drax phone to the big screen. She made me a video of her doing an acceptance speech and then projected it onto the wall. I want to thank my mum and especially my dad. I hope you're proud of your little princess now, she said. And I hope together we can end global warming and poverty and stuff. It looked wobbly but convincing on the big screen. I said, what exactly are you accepting? An award? For what? For being famous. I went to get a drink out the fridge and found some little bottles of water shaped like rockets with fins and a pointy bit at the top. They were perfect weapons for a water fight. I stuffed three in each pocket, tiptoed back into the living room and squirted Florida. She shrieked and ran after me. I threw her a bottle just to make it fair and we had this excellent water fight all over the house. I hid behind the couch hoping to ambush her. I must have fallen asleep there because the next thing I knew, the phone was ringing. This is your alarm call, it said. Please join your party in the car park of the Possibility Building at 8am. I picked my way through the discarded ice cream buckets and over the soaking wet floors and eventually found Florida, curled up asleep in a cupboard with the cleaning stuff. I woke up. She wasn't happy and went to get changed. 
I emptied my bag onto the bed so I could sort it out. There were some more craft notes and an unexpected envelope, which turned out to contain a photograph of me, mum and dad on my first communion day. Mum must have sneaked it in there. Dad's broken St Christopher statue was at the bottom of the bag too. He must have sneaked that in too. He'd obviously been worried about me going to the Lake District on my own. I bought it with me into space. It's standing on top of the multifunctional display, just like it used to on the dashboard of his taxi. If my dad could see it now, he'd be really worried. Through a ride of the century. This part of space seems to be communications dead zone. I can't get any signal on my phone. Maybe we're on the wrong side of the satellites. I'm going through old messages in my inbox for company. I've still got the last one Dr Drax sent. Take care of yourself and children. See you in 10 hours. That was 24 hours ago. Not only have I not seen Dr Drax, I haven't seen her planet. I've also still got the first one. It says, welcome to Infinity Park. Be at Post Building Car Park at 8. Courtesy car in drive. Use your phone to open car. Drive safely. Courtesy car? What's a courtesy car? Said Florida. Well, it's a car that they lend you and you can use it as much as you'd like. You mean a car for you to drive? Oh, no, 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 not after last time, said Florida. Then she said, what kind of car is it? Is it another limo? Let's go and see. It was a little greeny toyota thing. It looked like a big toy, really. I put my hand out to touch it. Liam, said Florida, we can't. No, we can't, you're right. Except, except what? Except, I'm supposed to be a taxi driver. Oh, so I've got to pretend I can drive. Liam, you can only pretend you can drive in a pretend car. In a real car, you have a real accident and get us really killed. It doesn't look that dangerous. I mean, it looks a lot less dangerous than a Porsche did. The tech said, you open it with your phone. I pointed the phone at it and the headlights blinked and all the doors opened. Then a roboty voice came from the dashboard and said, climb aboard, Liam Digby. You have to admit, this was interesting. You can't really blame us for getting inside the car. It would have been rude not to. As soon as we were in the seats, the car spoke again. Hi, Liam. Hi, Florida, it said. This drive should take about 15 minutes. Don't forget to fasten your seatbelts. Without us doing anything, the engine started up. A nice, gentle little engine. It sounded so reassuring. It sounded as though it trusted us. We fastened our seatbelts. Florida was looking around inside of the car. There's something missing, she said. It's got hardly any levers or buttons. It's an automatic. My dad drove one once when he was covering for someone else. He said it's like driving a Dodrum car. Florida said, Dodrums are easy to drive. It's hard not to disagree with this. I've driven loads of Dodrums. Not one of them stretched my abilities and the car seemed so helpful. While I was trying to come to a decision, I touched one of the buttons on the dashboard. Florida yelled, don't! It could be an ejector seat or something. The windscreen wipers started banging over and back across the windscreen. We both laughed. At least we knew what one of the levers was for. And the one with the picture of the headlight on was probably the headlights. So the one with the numbers on must be the one to make it go. I pushed it down a notch very gently and the noise of the engine changed to an angry roar and the sat nav said, this is my accelerator. Don't forget my handbrake. It wasn't even me. It was Florida who found the handbrake and slipped it. The car rolled forward, purring. Suddenly there was a different noise, a big honking noise and some squealing and lights flashing. Another car was driving up behind us when we pulled out. Other cars! I'd forgotten about other cars. This one swerved out past us and honked at us again. Another one squealed and honked just behind us. This is brilliant, whooped Florida inexplicably. The hardest part about driving a car is keeping it in the right place on the road. You mustn't go too near the curb. Your tyres make a weird screaming noise. Or too far over into the middle. Drivers coming on the other way look frightened and angry. At first, I tried to stay pretty much in the middle. When I looked in my rearview mirror, there was a line of cars behind me doing exactly the same. So I must have been right. And there was nothing at all ahead of us. We did everything the sat -nav told us. And soon, instead of driving past neat lawns and white bungalows, we were bumping along a narrow cinder track through a field full of tents and huts. Little kids kept running up to the car, banging on the window and smiling at us. There were donkeys and ponies tied up at the side of the road. A camel even walked in front of us. I said, this can't be right. But the sat -nav said, yes, this is right. Stop worrying. Now that's what I call an impressive level of interactivity. Then we saw it. Beyond the tents and over the left, the possibility building. It really was big and red, like a huge unopened present. I was trying to imagine what was inside, which is probably why the car drifted slightly off the side of the track, which is probably what led to the sirens and flashing lights going off all over the place and Florida shouting, stop, stop. 
I did stop. I stopped surprisingly completely. When we looked up, there were two policemen coming towards us with guns. Well, game over, said Florida. They're going to ask you for your licence. They'll find out you're not a grown-up and they'll send us home. Her theory was much more optimistic than mine. My theory was that they were going to shoot us. The police, in fact, bowed to us, got on the radios, talked in Chinese for a while and then bowed again. And one of them said, honoured guests in English. Yes, said Florida, honoured guests. That's us. Then he did this mime, which I think meant follow us in your car, even though you blatantly can't drive. And then they led us all the way to the possibility building car park. This was the best thing ever, according to Florida, because it was a police escort. And even Madonna doesn't get a police escort. And that's because Madonna doesn't have a dad like yours, I said. I'm going to stop there. I shall see you tomorrow for our next guided reading lesson. Stay safe.